Mark, you'll excuse me. Sure. And you'll fix the picture? No. Well, remember that I... Yes, and don't you forget it! favorite fruit. Banana na. Ew. Come on, that wasn't so bad. Really? I'll, I'll find a better one after this scene. Good luck. Discussion. 
shouldn't have gathered. That's right. Sandy, I love you, and I hope to everything holy that you find a new job. And I hope to everything holy that you don't move to San Francisco. You see, that's just the kind of guy I am. Complicated. But would you just accept one simple thing? What? This is my family's newspaper. Your family sold it a year ago. Which was a mistake. So what's your plan? Save your money and buy it back? Don't be ridiculous. Oh, well, it's the lottery, though. <coughs> repainting the newsroom in a in a tropical motif. Oh, I can finally paint that character montage I always wanted to. Ah, yes. And remember to check with that nice man you sent money to back in London. And if email addresses have arrived, I start my new business as a used golf ball broker tomorrow morning. Oh, yes. And remember to send a thank you note to that diner in Tulsa. Capital tongue sandwich. Simply what? Capital. Ah, yes. One last thing. Remember to find a freezer for that half cow that you bought in the city. Fifth wheels developing an aroma. <laughs> Bird, I'm scared. Let's go. Where? That way. And don't look them in the eyes. <laughs> ah, sweet kids. Now there's a vision that'll keep a man going through 4,000 miles of open road. Hello, Otto. Hello, players. Can I ask, please, what you're doing here? It's the old ball of chain. What's wrong with a visit every now and then? You said you'd never come back. We said you'd never come back. Everyone was happy. 
The truth? I couldn't stand not seeing you again. How long do we have? Two weeks? A month? We had nothing. You're thinking of the Paris flashback to Casablanca. Ah, yes. An excellent film. <coughs> What's that mean? <laughs> Don't say anything. Just let me look at you. You know, I've done a lot of thinking since going into retirement down in Florida. And I've made a decision. Oh. A man's got to keep busy. Busy. You've got to have interests. My friends down in the RV park in Lauderdale, they like to play golf or bingo or sit around and complain about the government. And you're moving into youth balls, right? No, no, no. Claire's. That'll just be my application. My day job. For my application, I have a higher call. Hi. I might be rush rushing things having to see you, but I have done a lot of thinking, and I've made the decision. Out of before you say anything, there's something I have to tell you. Mark and Sandy and the rest, they don't want you. What? So if you think you can come riding in here on a white horse and save the paper, you can just forget it. They just assume you hop in your RV and head home. Oh, Claire, it's funny. I didn't come all this way to save the paper. You didn't? Oh, heavens no. Mark can handle that lot of fools running the place now. No, Claris, I'm here for you. Handle fools on the what now? You've always known who I felt about you, and it's time I started acting on those feelings. Otto, before you left, you admitted it was just a boy who crushed. You've been having those off and on for 60 years now. I know what I said, but inside my heart was breaking. Oh, please, Claris, let me be a part of your life. Otto, I said no once. I understand your feelings for me. We'll never burn as hot as mine for you. And I'm going to accept that. Uh, my plan does not include a romantic entanglement. What did you have in mind then? Clarice, I want to be your butler. What? I would ask to be in your employ, my dad does not object. I'm sure you'll find my ranks most reasonable. Otto! I have to be near you, don't you see? It would be tragically romantic. Just like Gloria Swanson, Eric von Strongheim on Sunset Boulevard. That's one where Swanson goes crazy at the end, isn't it? Just give me a chance, will you? I'll make a great butler, you'll see. I can do some gardening, a little bit of laundry, and... I do this great grilled cheese and celery soup thing you would not believe. Otto, I have a confession to make. It's all right. I didn't expect you to wait around. Otto, I lied. It's all right. I forgive you. Otto, I lied about the paper. Mark puts up a good front. I'm sure he can handle it. They laid off two dozen people in the past month, and I'm sure they're going to do more. I'm sure he can handle it. Wait, two dozen? And that's just the beginning, Otto. I'm not sure I should tell you. No, 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 please, go ahead. I think they're going to sink the paper. What? It's nothing definite yet, just rumors real. Does Gladys and reception say it's true? Yes. I can't believe this. I won't believe this. I signed contracts with these people. Less than a year later, everything that we worked for. No. No, my grandfather started this business when he... No. I can't stand for it. I won't stand for it. Clarence, I'm sorry. But our life together, it's just going to have to wait. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's a battle to be fought here, and I'm just the guy to fight it. Now, where's this Maxwell guy? Well, Claire, there you go. Out of the frying pan, next for Volcano. <laughs>
And if I say that we worry about parking spaces, we worry about parking spaces. Oh, go stand at a desk and beat your chest right up, Dale. Maybe that won't impress her. Impress who? Don't be a ding, Curtis. We all know what this is about. Quit track to act tough. It's too late for that. I have always been this way. I have always been tough. Tough but up.
Get me. Okay. A mushroom walks into a bar. The bartender says, hey, get out of here. We don't serve mushrooms here. The mushroom says, why not? I'm a fun guy. A fun guy. Oh my god. That one also? Let's just start the scene. You're going? I have to go. No, you don't. 
You can call them info spill. You can call them and tell them anything. That's been your solution to everything, hasn't it? Sandy, don't go. Stay here. Wait for the roof to fall in. Sandy. Wait for me to flood this bit worse another year or three, and then we'll go somewhere where I can actually write. Mark, I'm covering giant vegetables and pet whitings here. I have had enough. Drain all of the common sense out of a room. 
I don't be able to do that sometimes. Don't you worry about a thing. It'll be all right. I have a plan. There he is! Call security! Well, hello, Maxwell. Mark, arrest this man! A sport editor can't do that. Just take an easy, Curtis, will you? I will not! You're going to be arrested for impersonating an executive! <laughs> now, Curtis, I'd want what you say if I were you. I don't know who you are, but you are in for a full measure of trouble. Curtis, this is my uncle Otto. You probably read about him in the rundown for the job. Otto Bauer? Yes, I remember. He was the producer, the producer before us. Righto. You kept trying to get everyone in negotiations to participate in group hubs. At one point, you delayed things a week for the World Series. One of the people in negotiations said it was the hardest job she'd ever had to deal with. Like trying to wrestle a salmon out of a grizzly bear that's sitting in your lap. Hey, I like the idea of that. You know, I think I'll paint that on the side of my fifth wheel. That poor woman is in an institution now. Good for her. I have always wanted to go into teaching myself. Uh, Mark, are you responsible for that man being here? No. Well, who is? Uh, he drove himself up. Ha, <laughs> ha, 
said it. Did you know Mark was looking for you? He's worried sick. He is? Oh, I, I guess I understand. Where is everyone? Well, they're down in the supplier and getting you some supplies. What are you doing here? I thought you were on dates. I am. I just came out to talk to Mark. Is he here? He's um, out in an errand, I think. Oh, I never really got a chance to meet him coming up here. Anything I can do to help. You know me. Well, I'm beginning to. Uh, Sandy? Me? Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. It's just that I'm... I'm wondering. Why exactly did you call me? <laughs> I should apologize for that. Playing the trick on Mark, actually. I was hoping you'd come down here and talk some sense with me about the Sentinel. Yeah, you mentioned something like that on the phone. And could I ask? Because I'm wondering. What exactly do you think I would... Dude. Well, it's like this. You see, I'm hoping Mark and I can move on together. I have an interview in the Bay Area tomorrow, and if things go well for me, we can move down there together and Mark can look for work. He'll find it without a problem. I'm sure of that. Well, how do you know? He's good at his job. Solid skill base, good resume, his layout portfolio, what would you get in a few interviews? And besides, I think he'd like to be editor of the sporting team someday. What? Well, what about the future here? No notes. I just like hearing myself talk. All right, you know, I got a really good one this time. Lon, can you tell me another proper joke I'm making? Okay, okay, just this one, this one. Where does a sheep go for a haircut? To the Baba shop. <laughs>
Sheehan. Mark? Oh, hello, Curtis.
You need to tell me you are drunk right now. Three shots, as they say. Do you think that Sharp would like me better, drunk or sober? Tough call, Curtis. Right now, I'm thinking a little tipsy. She was probably a party girl at some point in her life. Keep thinking that, Curtis. Why don't you sit down now? I would like that. Can I take your chair? Sure. Just sit. You're a pal, Mark Bauer. Clarice? I tried all the RV parks in the area, Mark. Most of them just had machines, but the two I did get haven't seen him. I've got a bad feeling about this. Where could he be? All right, joke's over. Oh, uh, what's wrong? Funny, Mark. Very funny. No wonder you were Mr. Standoffish when I tried to say goodbye. Uh... Where are they, Mark? Just tell me now, and nobody gets hurt. Sandy, I'm trying to look for Otto, and Maxwell has gone crazy. Crazy like an ostrich. Yes, yes, I can. Okay, that's yours. Okay. Mark, what's going on? Sandy, 
I need you. What, now? Uh, yeah, I, I need someone to read a story. Are there are no hitters? Mark, I don't know very much about baseball. Oh, you'll do fine. It's just standard news writing with a few party cliches thrown in. Like... Oh, uh, that's right, you're uh, polite. Um, uh, what is Thank you very much. Okay, okay, who? Curtis? Think you could answer the phones for us? I don't. I'm not. Just take the scores, that's all. Would you mind very much telling me what's going on? A Mariner pitcher could throw a perfect game tonight. If it does, it belongs on the front page and a better package worthy of it. So, what are you going to do? Redesign the section front and help you on phone. I'm really in the spot here, Curtis. I could use your help. What if he gives up a hit? Two rules of a no-hitter, Curtis. Number one, never regulate before the last step. And number two, never mention the H word. What? You mean hit? <laughs> That's the one, yes. So, if, if they should get up, I mean, if Martinez shouldn't be able to do it, then all this work will have been for nothing. That's right. And it could fall apart at the last minute, the last batter. And did you think I took this job to write about high schools every night? It's not worth the risk. Too tenuous. Poor use of resources. If it works, it'll mean a 25% increase in walk-up sales tomorrow morning. 25? If it's a perfect game, we might even get requests for copies from all over the country. You might even get away with upping the advertising rates. Hold today! Can you turn on the, uh, the, the, the box with the, the, the TV? Can you turn on the TV and just keep it low? Mr. Bauer? Just a second. Here. Take my uh, terminal. I need to go to the back shop anyway. Uh, that back? Yes. Good. Put it into the file I wrote. Thanks. No problem. And that's it for the Mariner 8. No runs, no hits, nobody left. We'll hold on to your seats, folks, because stuck in our mind right now is Man of the Hour, Rafael Martinez. Six hours away from a perfect game. We'll return with one half the eighth right after this. One last joke, I, I promise. What are you? Yehuda. Yehuda, where, where are you? Where, where did you? Did, did you actually. Ye Yehuda? The play isn't over yet. Ye Yehuda? Anything. We'd rather we look out for ourselves, 
Be ready to be at the drop of the hat and be loyal to the no one. But I can't pretend to be that way anymore. These people, they're all I think about. Like a family. You people. You'd rather I wasn't loyal to anyone. That I take a severance check and get out. Well, that's not what I'm going to do. You have a job to do here in a shark, and you have your reasons, so I can understand that. But I am taking it upon myself to fight you at every turn. Not one person loses their job without a fight. As the last power on the Sentinel, I owe them that. Well, that's what it has to be? Yes. I see. Good. Beg your pardon? Good. I give up. You're all keeping the jobs. In fact, I'd like to pay for the salaries that down here. Bring it into line with market value. That, that would be okay? Don't look so shocked, Mark. May I call you Mark? That would be okay, too. Um, would you mind telling me what just happened? I was sent here to evaluate the newspaper. That included the circulation, staff, revenue, everything. Home office has noticed that you seem to have a below average financial standing, but an above average product. You won some regional awards, I understand. News has won something eight years in a row. Exactly. You've got a good little newspaper. We want to use it. To do what? Whip for print right off. Sorry, but. I'm sorry, I still don't understand. Do you know who runs this corporation? Uh, some guy named Sherman, right? Richard Sherman, yes. He's a highly competitive individual. And Mr. Murdoch is the bane of his existence. They compete for awards all the time. I was sent here to decide if the Sentinel might be its go-to paper in the circulation side. And after I saw I have no doubt. You have an excellent staff who knows how to put together a newspaper. Uh, I just, I, I don't know about this. She wants us to cover the news just so some old guy in California can be the big shot at the club? That's not why I wanted to journal it, though. There'll be no equipment with the computers, combination, a phone system that works. We have a phone system that works. Her name is Gladys. That's a good one. I hope you one. Well, uh, what about uh, ad budget and circulation sales? I mean, we pretty much live to get out of Seattle County. Mr. Sherman understands competition. I'll fly right back to <coughs> and recommend he develops a plan. Push the times right out of the county. Considering the job you've done today, I'm sure I can go along with it. Wait, what about Maxwell? That's none of your concern. What if I told you Maxwell is a vital part of this newspaper? I wouldn't believe you. But considering the job I saw him do today, I almost understand why you say so. He deserves better than what he's got. There are better managers for the company. He deserves better. I want him to say. Well, I suppose you'd rather feel the fear of loyalty he is part of the chemistry here, and I wouldn't want to but, a piece of friendly advice? Yes. See if you can get the guy to listen up. You're saying he stays? I'll recommend it. Yes. Okay, then. Mr. Sharp, I don't know what your plans are this evening, but could we take you to your hotel? Or, more specifically, your hotel's bar? I think a little celebration is in order. Is the page too bad? Uh, almost. I just have to finish working out the final. <coughs> it's the whole thing. I know the bartender is. He'll stay over late for us. We'll need it. We have a lot to discuss. Okay.
Well, it was a funny thing. I really didn't do much at all. Everything just kind of fell into place. After the market said, I did give up. Went back to my trailer, opened up a can of chili, and turned on the TV. I was really sorry for myself, I guess. All the film I had was marked in this newspaper, and I felt like I was going to lose a vote. I prayed, Clarence, hard. Just something, anything, a chance. It's all I've ever asked for. But then, get this, I realized I was watching the game. And that Martinez fella, he had no hitter to sit. And I tell you, Clarence, I've never seen God. But after watching Martinez pitch one ball, I figured I'd be about as close as I'm ever going to get. They were lucky to get confidence against that man tonight. So you think God threw a no-hitter so you could do one of your little schemes? Oh, listen, I've watched him pitch all year. And if tonight wasn't God, it was surely the other guy. You might be right about that. <laughs> By the way, Sandy might want her cables back. I put them back in the car already. When she turns it on with no problem, she'll think her angels kept her there. That was a nice touch. I knew Mark was going to need all the help he could get. He need her to write the paper, too. Of course. Well, I'm back off the campgrounds. Just came by and rub it in. Oh, wait. I haven't always been fair to you. Sorry. You do have your moment. Oh, I'll be around for another two weeks or so. Dinner tomorrow? I work tomorrow. So what? Sneak out for an hour. I happen to know that the bullpen's going to be showing NBA playoffs all day long. And if we go right around <coughs> 6, the Lakers and Spurs should just be starting the second half. How about tonight? It's a little late, don't you think? Answer me one question. Sure. You're always consistent, yes? You might annoy people now and then, but you never surprise them. Well, I don't know about annoying people. I don't. Yes, I guess I am. That and a good white night might just be enough to get you a chance. Well, what do you mean? I'm meeting friends for Hilton. Up for a drink? Paris, you know I don't drink. You might start tonight. Well, can you give me a moment? Okay, but don't dawdle. I won't tolerate a butler who dawdles. Every day, something new. And 
finally, I'd like to thank our assistant director, Yehuda. You can give a flower to yourself. Mm -hmm. And pick whichever one you want. Um, I'd like to ask all the seniors on stage to please take a step forward. Um, it's kind of a DOS tradition at this point to thank our seniors um, and to really show them how much we appreciate everything that they've done, whether it's starting this play or starting back in ninth grade. We're really going to miss you guys. But I guess I'm a senior, so I'm probably going to be thanking the department. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, of course, I'd like to really quickly thank all the various members of the Upper School Administration that really gave us the opportunity to have the student run play in the first place, particularly Rabbi Levitt and Rabbi Trencher. And now, finally, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I know it seems like it's been a long time. Um, I'd like to thank the cast in this play. Um, you guys were really amazing. Um, by far one of the happiest casts, one of the most laughter filled casts that I've worked with. And I really appreciate the work with you, working with you guys. Um, I know, um, I know, I definitely feel like I learned a lot. I hope you learned a lot also. So thank you for making my last Hadass play so special. I really appreciate it. <laughs> um, and now, this is the last part. I I know next year will be different. It, it will be probably pretty weird at first. But from what I've seen, whether it's working with the Huda on our very organized trimester schedule, or working with Ellie and Jessica backstage, or Isaac, or Eliana and Lily, and or working with you guys on stage. I know that you guys will be fine. So with that, I'd like to say thank you to our audience again for coming out, and to wish everybody a good night.